September 16th of uh, 1989, six Jesuit priests at our university in San Salvador, the capital of El Salvador, six Jesuit priests, priests were killed at 2 a.m., and uh, two women were killed along with them. It was a horrendous uh, massacre carried out by the Salvadoran army, by a special forces unit of the Salvadoran army. What happened was that the, the whole city of San Salvador was practically under martial law because the revolutionary organization, the FMLN, was making gains. They were really moving forward, and so the army had the whole city under martial law. There was a curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. During that time, a unit called the Atlacatlo Battalion, the a special forces unit of the Salvadoran army, entered our university. Uh, but it had to be a coordinated effort of the whole military system because otherwise they could never have gotten in there. The whole university was ringed by Salvadoran soldiers, Salvadoran troops. Um, and so they went in there, the 26 soldiers, they started shooting up the university, just firing rockets and machine gun fire at various of our buildings and shooting up, shooting out the windows of cars that were parked there. And then they went into the house of the Jesuit priests, the soldiers went in, and they took each one out of his room at 2 a.m. on November 16th, made them lie down, face down, uh, in a garden just outside their house, a kind of patio of the house, and just literally blew their brains out. As you can see, the uh, horrific uh, uh, massacre that it was. So what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about them and how they thought, what kind of thinking did they have that sort of led to this in a certain sense. It led to their being prophets, their being social critics, and in solidarity with the poor, in favor of change. And because they were social, <clears throat> social critics and prophets, they were killed, just as Jesus was killed. Because he spoke out against hypocrisy, he spoke out against injustice, he was very much with the poor, and that's sometimes what happens to people, that we have to face that challenge uh, and that risk. So as I said, they were pulled out of their rooms, 2 a.m., and made to lie down, and with very heavy weaponry, the Salvadoran soldiers literally uh, blew their brains out. And two women were in a little wing of our house at the university. They had decided to stay on campus because it was thought that they would be safer on campus rather than going home, because the army was all around, the revolutionaries, the fighters were also very present in San Salvador. And it was thought, well, they'd be safer if they stay in a little wing of our Jesuit residence. But they were found, and they were machine gunned. It was just rivers of, of blood uh, in the room that they had been occupying, Elba and Selena. Because later, we found out that the order was given by the top military commander, uh, Colonel Rene Emilio Ponce the head of the Salvadoran Armed Forces. And he issued an order during the night of November 15th. There was a meeting of, basically, of the colonels of the Salvadoran Army. And Colonel Ponce issued an order to kill Ayacuria and leave no witnesses. That was the order that came down. Ayacuria, Padre Ignacio, Father Ignacio Ayacuria, was the president, the rector of the UCA, the, of our university. And he was a noted uh, critic of the system. He was a uh, noted, a uh, very uh, well-known voice of the people, a voice of prophetic criticism. He was in the movement of theology of liberation for social justice. And so he was the main target. Kill Ayacuria and leave no witnesses. And so that's why the women were killed and the other Jesuits as well. We, I went to the funeral. I went up there with some other Jesuits from Nicaragua where I have I had been there for uh, some years, and now I've been there for 28 years in uh, Nicaragua. But uh, So that's essentially what happened, the, this massacre of the six priests and the two women by the Salvadoran army. And we think it's important to kind of spread the word about that, to hold up their uh, witness and their courage. 
And we speak of celebrating the anniversary, celebrating the martyrdom. How can we speak of celebrating <coughs> such a, horrend a horrendous act? Well, we're not celebrating their suffering. We're not celebrating the death in itself. We're celebrating their love for people, a love that led them, prompted them to essentially risk their lives and give their lives. They knew it was very risky to stay there uh, where they were. So we're celebrating that love, that love of neighbor, which uh, inspired them to speak out against the causes of the suffering of the people. They, they were dedicated to the well-being of the people, especially the poor majority of the peasants and so forth of El Salvador, and they knew that they had to speak out against a system which was unjust, a system of oppression, a system of exploitation of the poor. But uh, So they saw their mission as love of the people, but a love of the people which expressed itself in the struggle for change, to change the unjust structures and systems of El Salvador so that the people would have a chance, so that the people could have uh, a more decent life. And so that's what we're celebrating, their courage, their ability to speak out against injustice. So what I'd like to show is a little bit of their thinking. What, uh, how were they thinking about their faith? How is it that their Christian faith led them to be social activists and social critics? This, this is the group of uh, the six Jesuits. The one in the middle, there at the top, in the top row in the middle, is Father Ayacoria, the rector, the president of the university. It's called the Universidad Centroamericana, <clears throat> the Central American University in San Salvador. He was the rector, the president, and he was the target. As I mentioned, uh, the order came down from the Salvadoran military to kill Ayacoria and leave no witnesses. Now, what was he doing? Well, he was promoting the theology of liberation. He was participating as the rector, as the president of the university in the struggle for a better world, uh, the struggle for a true kind of peace, which is always based on justice. You can't have true peace if it's not based on justice. If people are suffering uh, exploitation and oppression and so forth, it, it's a false peace. If, uh, and the whole thing can, can fall apart very easily because it's not based on justice. Uh, Elba, Doña Elba, she was a housekeeper, a cook, in one of our other Jesuit communities, not in that one. But she and her daughter, Selena, 15 years old, were on campus, as I mentioned, and it was thought that they would be safer by staying on campus that night. Well, it turned out to be just the opposite because the soldiers, after killing the Jesuits, they went, they opened the, the doors of all the rooms, they found Elba and her, her daughter in one of the rooms, and they just opened fire with automatic weapons against the two of them. And it was just a bloody, very bloody scene there at the end. Uh, the others uh, also were involved in the UCA. Uh, Father, the one on the right, there, Segundo Montes, he was the director of the Human Rights Institute of our university. So he obviously was not considered an ally. He was not considered a friend of the Salvadoran oligarchy, the people at the top, the 14 families, or a friend of the army. Not that he was against them, but he was criticizing <laughs> through the university, through the Institute for, so for Human Rights, criticizing the injustices, the oppression, the repression, the exploitation that the people at the top were carrying out against their own people, the majority of people of El Salvador.